18, 1 to 11. And we praise God for that. Uh, I thank you for being here. There's many other places you could have been this Labor Day weekend, but we thank the Lord that you decided to come and worship with us this afternoon. Now, how many of you have seen a potter shaping clay? It's a beautiful, creative position. And, uh, you know, it's not just an art, it's a craft. And you look at that wheel and you think it's something easy to do, but then you realize once you try it that it's a very hard task to shape clay into a pot. And let me just pray. Just pray with me for a moment. Almighty God, you are a gracious Father, clothed in majesty. You are mighty, yet you save us with mercy. Almighty God, you are an exquisite creator with hands that carve out beauty. You are an author of life, yet you give, up, you give us such freedom. You form us on your wheel of life as a potter holds a clay. Have mercy on us today, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to hear a word from you today. We thank you, Father, and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. As I said, I'll be taking my text from the book of Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, the first through the 11th verse. And in reading that chapter, I got so excited because I thought about, you know, as children, most of us at least once had an opportunity to uh, play with clay. Relative, however, none of us are were as sophisticated as the potter in Jeremiah's day. See, my son was in college and he took a ceramic class because he thought it would be an easy A. And he looked at the potter's wheel and he thought that it would be something simple. But once he got to make, to use that potter's wheel, he had to rework and rework and rework the clay before he could come up with a decent piece of pottery. And as he practiced and he redid it, it's amazing that this Christmas most of us received a nice handmade Christmas item which he made from his pottery class. So we thank God that he continued to rework it and practice with it. And see, Jeremiah was a prophet of Israel. Here he used the potter as, as a metaphor to show us our relationship with God. In chapter 11 through 20 records Jeremiah's personal experience and served to reveal the doom that was about to happen, about to fall upon God's covenant people. But in chapter 11, chapter 18, 11, 1 through 11 describes what Jeremiah learned while watching the potter at work. Potters in Jeremiah time didn't just generally make art. Potters in Jeremiah time, their aim was to make a useful vessel. They made things like bricks, lamps, toys, cooking pots, and jewelry. Because they used pottery for so many different things, pottery making in the, was the earliest and most widespread of familiar ancient Israel crafts. When a pot was flawed or came out wrong, the potter would take up the clay and rework it. They never threw anything away. He would make another pot, a new vessel of the same type to correct the fall and bring it back to the original purpose. God asked Jeremiah, can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as the potter has done? It's a hopeful word. Like the potter, God doesn't destroy or discord anything. What's spoiled or come out wrong, God reworks us. God shapes us so that we can fulfill his purpose. God wants us to be what he meant us to be. 
God does not give up on us. Are you thankful today that God does not give up on us? No matter how imperfect that we are, he will rework us and rework us and rework us until our selfishness realizes that his purpose for us may not be what we want to be. Jeremiah lived through a time that there was a divided kingdom. The nation of Israel was split in two kingdoms, the northern and the southern Israel. And both of those uh, both of those nations were usually ruled by evil kings. Jeremiah had a job that he needed to do, going between those three nations, trying to bring them back to where God wanted them to be because they had gotten sidetracked and decided that they wanted to do their own thing. Most of the kings were evil, distant from God, self-serving, just like we are today. As you know, both kingdoms were eventually overthrown, and God's chosen people were thrown into captivity. Jeremiah was both a prophet and a priest. Now, in his duties as a priest, he, you would think that he would have rather just done his priestly duties. All he had to do as a priest was show up at the temple, teach, and serve protecting the ministry. But as a prophet, he had to labor. He had to change the presence so they would have a future. So he went out. Jeremiah saw that the people were going in a wrong direction. He sought to call them back on the right path. He served under mostly evil kings, warning them not to worship idols, to return to an obedient, godly way of life. Jeremiah's words were ultimately ignored in his lifetime. He witnessed the destruction of the temple of, Jer of Jerusalem. Judea fell to the Babylonians. Perhaps one of the most well-known of all Jeremiah's writings is found in chapter 18, and his words are as relevant today as they were 2,005 2, years ago. As we listen to Jeremiah's dilemma, we live in tension between God's hands and our lives, shaping and molding and forming us. As our ability to push away those hands and make our own choices become our own thing, God is a potter. I do what I want with this clay. God also says, if the clay will act right, I'll change my mind. All God wanted to do was he wanted Jeremiah to go out and give them the prophecy. God does not want to destroy us. God wants to be able to send a prophet to give us the news so we would change back to what, he, we would go back to his ways. But a lot of times we don't want to hear what the prophet has to say. Jeremiah says that God can do with us as God wants. He also says that God's action is shaped by our choices. It is a contraction and a parent, a contradiction and a paradox. For people of faith, there's no way around it. It's not either or. It's both and. God is utterly sovereign and powerful. We are accountable and responsible for the action of our or, or the actions and our consequences. God is in control. We have a choice. Jeremiah's message of good news and bad news. The bad news is that if we turn from God, we face God's judgment. The good news is, if, is that God loves us enough to let us choose. The bad news is that God abides by our choices. The good news is God is forever ready to redeem us, restore us, and bring us back to a right relationship with him. Our future is never closed. The hands of the divine potter will, is always ready to rework and make new. You know, my title today, if I would take a title for my topic, would be Reworked by the Divine Potter. Do you want to be reworked today by the divine potter? 
The key, according to Jeremiah, is repentance. It is the turning of our hearts and minds back to God. It's the courage and surrender of God leading and will. There's an old hymn that we like to sing. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Thy art the potter, and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am weighted, yielded, and still. It's easier sung than done. We resist change. Like the people of whom Jeremiah wrote, we're often stubborn. We want to do it our own way, and even sometimes assume that our way is uh, the only way. It's hard for us to wait, yield it, and still. Nobody asked the clay if it wanted to be pulled, pounded, stretched, shaped, molded, and put to the fire. Unlike the clay, we have our own ideas about who does what in our lives. We know that growth, change is being made. New is often painful. It's often a painful process. We resist it. We hold on to our old ways and our life like our lives depend on it. You know how it is. We say we want to be a potter. We want to be in the potter's hand. Melt me. Mold me. Fill me. Use me, but we're afraid of what would happen if we really let go, if we really let him mold us, if we really let him shape us. You know, a lot of times we pray for things and we're so afraid that God's going to give it to us, we don't know what to do with it. We're frightened. If we like the clay, remain hard and refuse to allow ourselves to be moistened. The best potter there is cannot fashion a thing of beauty out of us if we refuse to allow him to moisten us. He reworks it into another vessel as it seems good to him, as it seems good to him in a matter of trust. It's hard. It's hard to trust sometimes, but we have to trust God. Allow him to mold us. Allow him to make us. In God's hand, how much more beautiful, purple, the whole we can be in our lives. If we just allow him to mold us, allow him to shape us, allow him to change us. The clay is not attractive in itself, but when the hands of the potter touch it, and the potter makes it whole. We notice Jeremiah says in the beginning that I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was martyred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. The pot was martyred in his hands and he reworked it. Rework me today, God. Help me to be the person that you would have me to be. Change me, Lord. Let me be on the right track instead of the wrong track. Help me, Lord. You know, God is a good God. God is willing to mold us again and again and again if we stop resisting him. There is no failures in our lives. We need to be we need to hold on to his unchanging hands. You know, God gave new beginnings to Abraham. He gave Moses a new beginning. He gave David a new beginning. He gave Jonah a new beginning. He gave Peter a new beginning. Why would he not give me a, a new beginning? God created each one of us for his purpose, not for my purpose, for his purpose. He thought of me when he molded me in my mother's womb. He knew exactly what it was he wanted me to be. God is the same yesterday today and forever. He is bigger than we can comprehend. He is greater than we think. Nothing is beyond his ability. Whether it's a problem to solve, 
a marriage to reconcile, memory to heal, guilty conscience to cleanse, a sin to forgive, a business to save, a budget to stretch, another mouth to feed, a body to close, a boss to please, a job to find, a habit to break. God can do all these things. Because see what God cannot do. He cannot leave you. God cannot forsake you. God cannot stop loving you. God will forgive you every time you ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. God cannot neglect his children. God can't give, be given a job that he can't handle. God cannot make a loser. God made you, so you are not a loser. God can't make a mistake. God cannot lose. God can't be unforgiven to those who ask to be forgiven. God can't stop thinking about you. God cannot fail. Mark it down. It will never happen. You may think that you have gone too far, done too much, but God wants to give you hope this afternoon. He wants to give you peace. He sent his son to die for your sins. Accept his sacrifice for you this afternoon. God wants you to change. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. You just need to let the potter grab a hold to you and mold you and shape you. He needs to rework you and to what he would have you to be. You're not a loser. You're not a failure. You are successful today. Never throw your life away over a flaw or a mistake or a sin. Never allow God to be broken. Never allow yourself to be broken and remain that way. God didn't throw clay, the clay of your life away. He can reshape you heal you, and put you back together again. Come and take a part in his love today. He wants to redeem you, remake you, refill you today. God is here to give you another chance, Amen. and another chance, and another chance. He will give you a chance every time you ask him to. He will mold you. But one thing you gotta understand too, sometimes when you get in the fire, just like the potter is bold, you become hard. The potter can't reshape you once you become hard, but God will break you. He will break you and remake you. So even when you become hard, you're hard-hearted, you're hard, you're angry, God will break you and remake you. So we thank God today that he is the divine potter and he will rework you. He will rework you until you become that perfect vessel that he has called you to be. We thank God this morning for that. We thank God because he sent us a message today through Jeremiah. There are several scriptures in the Bible that talks about the potter. He wants us to have an opportunity to understand that that's just a metaphor. He's talking about us. He's letting you know what he can do with us if we only repent and come unto him and he will change us. We thank God for that. Oh God, you are our creator and our redeemer. You breathe life into us. You marked us as your own. You called us to live in the world in covenant with you and one another as holy people. You have made us fulfill your purpose and do the work of your kingdom. We humbled by the thought of how much you care. The mystery of your love is more than we can comprehend. You are the God who formed us in our mother's room, and you are the God who forgives and continue to mold us. Ever creating God, help us to be who you intended us to be. We want to fulfill the purpose you have for us. Help us to do your will. Mold us, Lord. Mend us, Lord. Make us whole. Make us bold to speak the word in these days. Keep us faithful in actions and thoughts.